for future applications. I think uh, so. We, we are really looking forward into having uh, both intraoperative OCT or registration of a preoperative OCT to make sure that we peel the membrane, that we know where to start the peeling, uh, and to see real time uh, almost results. And I'm sure that uh, also in anterior segment, if you're talking about, uh, I, I don't know, yeah, yeah, um, implementation of uh, toric IOLs and you would like to see data, so it could be also helpful for anterior segment surgery, wouldn't it? I agree. Um, torix, uh, centering on the visual axis versus the pupil axis, uh, I would love to see the depth of the cataract in, in a vertical type of imaging, so even if we could have simultaneous imaging that I could see my phaco needle going down on the side of the screen, and I would be able to tell how deep I am, maybe not for me, but for learning surgeons, or even type of sensors that can measure where you are related to the posterior capsule. I think there's a tremendous amount of guidance applications, both for refractive surgery and for complicated surgery that can help uh, help the surgeon do a better job. So, I, I mean, I think the main deal is gonna be getting the companies like Bionics to prioritize which project to work on and what to do. and. and yeah. And I think the good thing about Bionics is that it's uh, modula modulary. I mean, you can add one thing and then add the other, and so on. It's like a cellular phone almost. You can uh, you can add multiple applications as you go. Yes, yes. Um, you know, and one thing that uh, is for people that have tried 3D screens and have struggled with it, like people, a lot of people have demoed with it. Those 3D screens it's imperative that the screen is in the, you are completely perpendicular in front of it, and you can't be looking down on that, those 3D screens or up, or it reduces the 3D depth of field you have. Um, so there are some people that like, for example, if somebody is very tall and they come in the operating room and they're standing above me, behind me, their 3D view on the 3D screen may not be as good as mine, or if they're shorter, or if they're standing from the side. So, this system, whoever is wearing the headset, if it's multiple people, they're seeing exactly what the surgeons see. They don't have to worry about their angle and getting in position where they see the 3D screen properly. So it, it not only allows a little more freedom for the surgeon, potentially allows a little bit more freedom for collaboration. And again, if we're talking about like telemedicine opportunities or if this, you know, this world-renowned professor from Italy in the future Instead of him having to go into the operating room and maybe looking, turning on a large format 3D screen to see what you're doing to collaborate, he could be at home and put on a headset, right? And he could see what you're doing, or you could see what he's doing while you're at home. And you right, exactly, exactly. Back exactly. and forth on a microphone and assisting each other uh, of interesting cases and, and uh, collaborating.